Hello, and welcome to part two of the Kent Surrey Boundary Film. In this part, we will be starting here, just north of Crystal Palace Park, and continuing our journey all the way to the Thames. Here's our first stop. Remains of Upper Sydenham Station, one of many stations built in the Victorian period. No one really actually used this station, hence it was closed in 1954. However, the remains of the railway tunnel can still be seen, and the station house is now a private residence. And some of the platform still remains. The Kendasuri border runs along Sydenham Hill where can be found Sydenham Hill Wood, a remnant of the once great North Wood which covered much of South London back in the old times. Notable uh, local residents include John Logie Baird, TV pioneer, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a priest who opposed the Nazis. We're here at the former site of Surrey House, home of the Horniman family. Frederick Horniman amassed a large collection of stuffed animals and various bits and bobs from around the world and decided to create a museum here, which is now called the Horniman Museum. The Kent Surrey boundary runs along the eastern edge of the museum grounds. Surrey and Kent. We're here on top of One Tree Hill, which straddles the Kent Surrey border. This boundary was formerly marked by, a, by an oak tree, which has some connection with uh, Queen Elizabeth I and came to be known as Honor Oak, giving its name to the surrounding area. Also, a boundary post there. We're here near Nunhead, which is just over the Kent Surrey boundary on the Surrey side. There are a number of things here, most famously, Nunhead Cemetery and also a very rare post box of King Edward VIII, the king who reigned for only a year, and also like Hitler. <laughs> We're here in Lucos, an area which lies directly on top of the Kent Surrey boundary. Indeed, Lucos Gate Station lies in Surrey, but Lucos Station lies in Kent. Here in the university grounds can be found an old boundary pillar. There's also another one here on Vesta Road. Yes, I, I quite agree. We're here at Surrey Docks Farm. So as I was saying, And so we've come to the end of our county journey. Here in former times, the Earl Slice, a small stream which ran along the boundary, came into the Thames. 
and on the opposite bank lies Middlesex. The Earl Slice is now covered over, however an old stone does commemorate the boundary. However, many people today are sadly unaware of this fact. Such has been the wanton destruction wrought upon our historic counties by successive governments of all political persuasions over the past 50 to 60 years. Our noble shires have existed for untold centuries and provide people with much cherished local traditions and identities and a fixed geographical frame of reference in which all Britons could take pride. Indeed, it would be no exaggeration to say that our noble shires are as much a part of our cultural heritage as the medieval cathedrals, the works of William Shakespeare, or indeed the English language itself. Sadly, this blessed age is no more. The rot set in in 1888 with the creation of the so-called County of London. However, the worst of the damage was done in the 60s and 70s. Unaccountable Whitehall mandarins, drunk with power and riding roughshod over local resistance, began to alter our historic county boundaries at will, foisting upon a cowed populace such hated and unwanted entities as Avon, Cleveland, Greater London and the West Midlands. And so it was that centuries of cherished tradition was wiped out at the stroke of the bureaucrat's pen, all in the name of progress and modernization. As indeed, at that same time, so many of our beautiful Victorian buildings were knocked down to be replaced with hideous concrete eyesores. Offensive to both the human eye and spirit. Untold confusion has been caused, and the damage done already great. Our shires, chafing under the yoke of this burning injustice, cry out for vengeance. However, it is not too late. Many organisations now seek to promote the historic counties, and the county flag movement has garnered much success. Most notably, in 1997, Rutland was restored. However, much work still remains to be done to save our shires. What will you do?